this uh, chair I'm sitting on squeaks. So forgive me if you can hear it squeaking throughout the video. But hi everyone, it's me Maddie, and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Maddie, and I post different types of content. I post book videos on Mondays, and I post Tales of Arcadia content on Fridays. But today is a Monday, and you're getting a troll hunters video because I wanted to do this video. And now I kind of want to do one for each of the Tales of Arcadia series, Troll Hunters, Three Below, and Wizards. So if you like this video and you want to see me do one for Three Below and for Wizards, tell me in the comment section down below because I don't really like Three Below, but I definitely think there are some episodes that I prefer out of the others. Granted, I don't know what they are at the moment. I know which episode is in the bottom place. Oh, I'm telling you right now, I know exactly what episode comes in last. But today we're here because I am ranking every single Troll Under episode from my least favorite to my favorite. There are 52 episodes, it's gonna be a long video. I'm probably not gonna be able to explain my feelings for all of these that well because honestly, some of them are just at the bottom because I prefer others over this one. Um, so yeah, I, I don't have much of a reason. Uh, you're gonna hate me for like 49th, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you're gonna dislike me for that one. Um, but we'll talk about it when we get there. Uh, so yeah, we got 52 of these to go through. It's gonna be a long video. Grab your water, grab your popcorn, grab your snacks. Hit the comment section. Feel free to disagree with me, though I'm pretty sure we're all going to agree on the one that's in place 52 because Ugh. all right in spot 52 we have the episode 10 of season one you all know what this is it's young atlas uh this is my least favorite episode uh i skipped this one upon rewatch i could barely get through it the first time i watched it but since it was the first time i was watching the show i had to get through it you know um and it has an important plot point at the end of the episode. Something really important happens. I just, I hate Jim in this episode. And I am a big simp for Jim. I adore Jim. I love him as a main character. He's, like, awesome. I love Jim. But in this episode, oh my god. He's just, I can't look at him. Like, literally, whenever a clip from this episode comes up in an edit, I'm like, oh my god. Why do you not see? I just, I don't like Jim in this episode. I don't like what happens with the grit shaka. I just, I don't like cocky Jim. I'm never going to like cocky Jim. I don't like cocky characters. They're my least favorite things to read from, watch on TV. I, I don't, even if they have a great arc where they go from cocky to not cocky, I just, I really despise them. So, I'm sorry to say this, but I feel like we can all agree, and if you don't agree... Hit me up in the comment section. Let's talk about it. Why do you like this episode? Uh, but yes. Okay, 51 now. Uh, we have Party Monster, which is the 21st episode in season one. This one's just a filler. I don't watch it upon rewatch. I watched it once. I know what happens in it. It's not that important. Claire's, Claire and Nod Enrique have um, an a relationship bonding at the end of this episode, but it's really just Nod Enrique throws a party for the trolls. Trolls are hypocritical. They hate changements, but they go to a changements party. Yeah, it's not that important of an episode. It's really just filler. You don't even have to watch it if you don't want to. I mean, you should watch all these episodes at least once. Because uh, you never know. You might like the Grit Shock episode. I don't. But you might like that that episode. Um, but, I mean, it's filler. It's one. It's. I think there's only two filler episodes throughout this entire series. And this is one of them. And it is my least favorite out of the two. Because I don't even get any laughs out of it. The other filler is higher up on the list and it's because I get laughs out of that filler episode and this one doesn't make me laugh it doesn't make me feel anything I don't like Claire I like not Enrique but I do not like Claire so like they like just cancel each other out so that's why it's in 51st place all right I'm gonna get hate on this one do da do da coming in 50 years but we have Creep Slayers yeah guys so this is 
episode 9 of season 2. It follows Steve and Eli. It follows the same events as episode 8, the one that came right before it, except it's from Eli and Steve's point of view. And they think Jim is a big bat. They think he's a little evil. Uh, and so this episode consists of them uh, trying to kill Jim. And I know so many people like this episode, at least from the fandom and like on Wattpad and in fanfictions or just in edits in general. A lot of people like this episode because a lot of people like Steve and Eli. And I like Steve and Eli. I ship them more than I ship Steve and Aja. I'm sorry. Maybe I just don't like Aja. I mean, I don't. But that's besides the point. So I don't hate this episode. I mean, but I, like, I already got the story from episode 8 and now it's just from Steve and Eli's point of view and I don't know it's just not my favorite uh I wouldn't rewatch it I rewatched it upon my last rewatch but if I was to rewatch it right now I would not rewatch that episode specifically um and yeah I just didn't like it I do love the credits though because it is so much fun that they say they have a little song and they just react to the credits They're like why are we, we're next we're next Eli no no we're not next what even Claire gets one I love the credits I think those are really funny and really entertaining to watch but that's my favorite part of the whole episode the ending all right, we're in the 40s. Uh, so episode 40, no, not episode 49. In spot 49, we have a night to remember, which is episode 25 of season one. I know, I know. This one has a lot in it. This is where, this comes right after anger management. Steve's mother is in peril. She could die. Um, and Claire and Toby have to go to the school to get the thing from Strickler's office that will save her, ultimately. Um, and so a lot happens in this, uh, Claire, the horn gozzle, uh, Steve's, not Steve, jeez, Jim's mom, uh, almost dies, but then she doesn't die. So there's a lot that happens in this, but I just, I don't know. I don't really like it. I don't pay attention to it when it comes on. I will rewatch it, but I'm not one who's gonna, like, pay close attention to it. I'd rather play Crossy Road when it comes on, uh, but... I mean, it's important to the plot, so yeah, I feel, I feel bad putting it all the way down here. Honestly, I do. I really do. But moving on to spot 48, we have In Good Hands. This is episode 9 of season 3. In this one, we are introduced to Aja and Corel, who are the main characters in 3 Below, the next series in this um, franchise. And it's kind of just like a scavenger hunt. Um... I mean, it's entertaining to watch, you know, but in 47th place, we have Just Add Water, which is episode 8 of season 2. This is the one that comes right before Creep Slayers. It's fine. It's decent. My favorite Claire line, or one of my favorite Claire lines, comes in this episode, and it's where she says they named Petunia, their bag of flour, Petunia, because Petunia's a flower. <laughs> It's such a bad pun, but I eat it up. I love that. I laugh at that line every single time. It's just so stupid, but I love it. Uh, I just love it so much. Um, in 46th place, we have Roaming Feast May Apply. This is episode 16 of season one. I don't really like this episode, um, <laughs> but another joke. <laughs> Okay, there's a joke in this one, um, and there's how, okay, just, <laughs> Jim, like, okay, I'm sorry, I adored this a lot, and I just heard my mom walk across the hallway, so now I'm kind of concerned that she's listening in, and this joke, <laughs> it's not inappropriate, because they can't curse, but Jim almost curses in this, in this, and I, I adore it, because it's just, anyway, so, they're talking, they have poop puns or whatever, and Steve's like, you think you can out poop pun me, Lake? And Jim goes, how can I do that? Wouldn't you the biggest piece of, and it cuts off by Strickler opening the door. And I love that so much. <laughs> it brings me so much joy, just that. That is the best part of this, of this episode for me, is that poo pun, that poo, that poo joke. I love it. I love it. I love it. I don't know if you can tell, but I love that joke. It's just the stupid jokes that I adore. <sighs> okay, 
in the 45th place, we gotta keep going, uh, we have The Reckless Club, which is episode 10 of season 2. Now on this list, it is uh, right below, it's below Romy if he's may apply, but I already filmed this up to 45 and I was like, no, I think I should refix that. So, yes, we have The Reckless Club in place 45. Um, it doesn't, it's not a filler episode because it does have, um, Jim, he makes a really, really big decision. And it's a decision where he tells Blinky and Arg that he's not going to let them go down with him for going into the Darklands. He's like, it's my fault that you all had to come get me out of the Darklands. And... <sighs> my boy. My beautiful baby boy. Um... <laughs> Yeah, and that's what happens. It's a really important part of the episode. But other than that, it's kind of all just not super important. Though, Drawl does attack Jim in this episode, so that is important. And we have the thing with Steve seeing him in the mole costume. So that's also important. I guess it's a pretty important episode when you lay it all out like that. But it also kind of has the kids being fun. And you haven't got to see Jim have fun in such a long time. And even though he has this impending doom of what the council... Is it called the council? Whatever. When it has his impending doom of the council looking down at him, and he's just still having fun. And, yeah, I mean, it's not my favorite episode by far, obviously, and it's list placement, but I like it, so... I like all these episodes. I need to say, I like all these episodes except for 52, aka Young Atlas. It's my least favorite. Uh, but I love all these episodes, and I'm just here struggling to say which one I like the most. Well, that's a lie. That wasn't very hard. But I'm struggling to say which ones I like from second place to 51st place. 50th place. 50th place. Okay! Another hate one. Ooh. Ooh, another hate one. In 54th place, we have So I'm Dating a Sorceress. This is episode four of season three. Y'all, okay, I don't hate this one. Like, there's another funny joke in here that I so adore, and you bet your bottom dollar I am going to tell you what it is. Because it's just so funny. And when I rewatched this, I didn't laugh at it. I mean, the first time I saw it, I like chuckled. I was like, Haha. <laughs> but upon rewatch, I rewatched that scene so many times because I just couldn't watch, like, I couldn't stop watching it. Dukesy is, well, actually, Dukesy is inter introduced in episode one, but we get to see some Dukesy in this episode, um, and I like Dukesy. And, uh, <laughs> Claire gets possessed. And uh, they're on a double date, Jim and Claire and Toby and Darcy. And Toby's like, you start speaking Spanish with her when you don't know what to do. And then he starts speaking Spanish and he gets kicked in the shin. But what is my favorite joke is when <laughs> Darcy and Claire are going to the bathroom and Toby's like, rule number three, rule number three, rule number three. And Jim's like, what? And then he just kicks him. <laughs> I, I love that scene so much. It's like, wrong rule. <sighs> I love Jim and Toby's friendship, uh, so yeah. I filmed this before Rise of the Titans, and that just hurt me so much. <laughs> 43, 43 uh, is Airheads. This is the uh, 19th episode of season one. I just, it's got Claire and Toby bonding, and they're floating, and there's that. They have that good scene with Not Enrique where Toby's like, hey, Not Enrique, help, and he's like, Yo, tons of fun! What you doing up there? And he takes a picture. You like you like my um um impressions, interp interpretations. What's that word? I don't know. But it has that. Uh, Claire gets to work with the shadow staff. Toby's jealous of Claire. Um, and I think one of the things this show did really well was balancing the dynamic of having two friends date. And they're kind of being a third wheel. Uh, but they did it so well that Toby doesn't really feel like the third wheel. Jim and Claire aren't super out outwardly romantic. Uh, Toby and Darcy, I think, are way more outwardly romantic than uh, Claire and uh, Jim are, and I just, and this episode kind of shows that Toby thinks it's going to get, like, replaced with Claire, and my boy Jimbo would never do that to you, Toby. He would never. In 42nd place, we have Parental Guidance, which is episode 6 of season 3. Now, I love, I love in superhero shows or 
troll hunters, this type of stuff, wherever there is somebody who is being like a vigilante or a hero of some sort and somebody close to them finds out. I love that stuff. Um, and some of my favorite parts of reading or watching or just consuming that type of media is when that, when our hero has to reveal themselves to someone close to them. And in this episode, uh, Barbara, Ophelia, Javier, Nana, all of them find out. Uh, and yeah, good. Um, but I think this is probably my least favorite way that it's ever been, well not ever been revealed, there have been some bad reveals. I don't know, it just wasn't my favorite reveal out of the series, and there's not that many reveals in the series. I just, they kind of revealed it, and then they went straight to goblins, and then they went straight away. I don't know. I can't really explain all of these that well, guys. You're just going to have to work with me. In 41th place, we have Arcadia's Most Wanted, which is episode 2 of season 3. This one... I, I love, I like this episode, I, it's kind of, my, it might, I mean, in placement, it's not my least favorite episode of season three, because I have this before episode four, but, I uh, it's not, it's my, like, they're tied, four and three, they're kind of tied with my least favorite of the season, uh, it's entertaining, but the whole thing where Toby's, like, wanted is just not super entertaining to me, though the car joke is great, where Toby's like, I can't talk right now, Jim, or he can't talk, he's talking to Jim, I don't know, but he's like, I'm in the middle of a high-speed chase, and then the camera zooms out, and he's like going like two miles an hour, that was like a really good joke, this show's got good jokes, y'all, it's got really good jokes. In 40th spot, we have Hiss Hiss Bang Bang, episode 6 of season 2. I watched the first five episodes of season 2 in about one day or right after I watched season 1. I don't remember exactly how that went. And then I got to season, uh, episode 6 of season 2, and I kind of just, like, paused. I just stopped watching it for a couple of days. I just wasn't really enjoying it at that point for that episode. I mean, I was enjoying the first five episodes of the season, but I didn't really enjoy... Episode 6, and it's right after uh, Jim gets back from the Darklands. And I love the Darklands. I love the Darklands. But, anyways, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh, so it's right after Jim gets back from the Darklands, and I just didn't really like it. I mean, they're kind of acting weird with Jim. Jim's a little, Jim's cute in this episode. Because he's like riding his bicycle, bicycle with no hand and one wheel. <laughs> He's adorable. But yeah, uh, and then I have on here on this list as a note, I have the armor scene. The armor scene in this is so beautiful. And he's like, for the doom of Gunmar. And Toby's like, wrong one. And then he says the right one. And he just slams it onto the floor, floats into the air, spins around, and boom. <sighs> beautiful. Beautiful, guys. Beautiful. All right, so now we are in the 30s. And we have in 39th place, we have... Grand Theft Auto, the third episode of season two. This is the one where they're trying to get, uh, trying to bring, uh, Arg. I so, I'm so sorry. Uh, they're trying to get Arg to come back to life, and they have to work with the, uh, dear. Oh my god, I have just so much like information going through my brain right now, I can't think of anything. They have to go with Gunmar's friends that I cannot think of the name of at the moment. They have to team up with them or they don't really team up. They do like a little exchange. It's, yeah, I mean it's kind of probably like my least favorite of the Darklands in this one. So we're just going to go on to 38, which is To Catch a Chain Blame. This is the seventh episode in season one. It's fine. Changelings are introduced. Changelings play a very, very big part in the entire show. Uh, and they're introduced, and yeah. Yep, that's that. The fun little doctor scene where Blinky, like, goes to the... He sees a sun paint on the wall. He's like, ah, it burns! He's like, oh, it's fake. That's cute. But, I mean, there are some Clarem moments, if you like Clarem. But I don't like Clarem in season one. I like Clarem in Wizards, but I don't like Clarem in any of Troll Hunters. I cannot explain to you what changed besides literally Jim. He literally changed into a half troll. But I don't know why I don't like Clarem in Troll Hunters, but adored in Wizards. I don't know why I do that, but I do that. And I don't know why. 
Alright, 37th we have The Oath, which is uh, Season 3, Episode 7. Wow, just blanked on reading that off my list. And this is the one where they have to go and get um, the staff and get Merlin. And I mean, you can see low on the list. I don't have that good of a memory of them. And I mean, like, it's fine. Drawl dies. Tear. Um, I mean, I didn't cry when Drawl died. I'm heartless, I know. So, yeah, there's that. And I think it's this episode. No, maybe it's the next episode in this. If, I don't know if it's seven or if it's eight. But there's a scene where uh, Darcy's father, Detective Scott, he comes and he knocks on the door or whatever. And he sees Dictatious. And uh, Nana hits him on the back of the head with a shovel. And she goes, oh, don't be such a bunch of daisies. Help me move the body. I love that. And you know why I know that so well? Because I have an Instagram reel of me doing the words. Because I was like, which verse fits me best? Nobody answered. But it's fine. I had fun and that's all that matters. Okay, I had a hard time placing this one. It is uh, episode 20 of season 1, Where Is My Mind? That's here in 36th place. I had a hard time because the only... Uh, everybody in this episode gets like a pixie in their ear or up their nose or that gives them their biggest fear. And I think it's kind of funny to see what all these people's biggest fears are. But I think Toby's biggest fear is really stupid. Um, and I just, I think uh, Claire's biggest fear is like reasonable. I just don't like Claire in Troll Hunters. So I did not like seeing her biggest fear and seeing her almost get sucked into a locker. And if you haven't seen Troll Hunters, then I bet you are really confused right now. Um, so there's that, but I do like Jim and how Jim, even though he was infected by his nightmare, he stayed ready to fight Angor because he knew what was coming. Uh, so I liked that. And then Blinky, he's trying to run because he's a human right now and, you know, he can't because he, well, because he's a human and he's got, he's a little bit of a chubby human and he just can't run that far. I couldn't run that far. Um, it's a long run. And he tries to steal a car, but he doesn't know how to drive. In uh, 35th place, we have Know Your Enemy, which is the fourth episode of season one. In this episode, Jim has to go and get his amulet back from a gnome because they stole it. And there are some questions I have because, I mean, yes, the gnome stole it, right? And so he can't, it doesn't come back to him because it was stolen from him. But then why didn't he just reject it? Because in episode six of that season, he he has like he like tosses the amulet or whatever, and he goes to the bathroom, and then the amulet comes back, and he's like, oh yes, 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 it worked. So like, did he reject it then? I don't know. And then there's a whole thing with episode twelve and Claire and that. Um, but I'll pass that off because that was a freaking bad butt scene right there. We're getting ahead of ourselves. So yeah, no me right me. It was entertaining. It's fine. Um, not the worst of the season. We already talked about the Grit Shaka. And then Toby gives him a pencil, stabs him in the thumb. That was cute. That was fun. Always makes me chuckle a little bit. After that, we have... I, sorry, I just lost where I was. We have, in 34th place, we have For the Glory of Merlin, episode 8 of season 3. Yeah, Merlin's awakened. He's old. I hate Merlin so much. You manipulative little piece of crap. I hate you, Merlin. But Jim is a, a really good scene right here. Really bad, but if you ask me, he says it myself. Um, he parts water. He becomes Moses. He just parts the water with his sword. Yes, babe. Yes. Be strong. Be awesome. And you show Merlin what a piece of crap he is. Ugh, I hate Merlin. But... That seems pretty cool. Uh, in 33rd place, we have Mistrial Mr. and Error, which is episode 12 of season 2. The reason this is so far down, because it is a very important episode, it is Jim's trial after coming back from the Darklands. Very important episode, very big deal, all of that. The reason it's so far down here is because... <sighs> let me... You all go guess in the comment section, why is this episode far, so far down on the list? 
Claire. Yeah, so they're trying to get a, uh, find out who's a changeling in Troll Market, and um, Claire goes with Blinky, they end up killing the man. Userna becomes a bad woman, is revealed to be a bad woman, which Userna bringing ba being bad brings up the question of why she was so, like, intent and so, like, must do this, must do this, to throw away the bridge pieces if she's bad. Because she wanted Gunmar back. And he, I don't, I don't know why. But the only, yeah. So it's really low down there because I don't really like the parts with Claire and the changing and all that. And, I mean, Toby, as a lawyer, he could have done better, my guy. Uh, but I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. I do adore the end scene. A lot of these episodes, the endings are like oh, my favorites, um, and that's kind of why they're high up on the list. Because like the whole episode might be a little boring or just not my favorite thing in the world, and then we get to the ending, and I'm just like, it was beautiful. It was well done. Uh, and that's this ending scene. He gets put into the pit where all the trolls go to die, and it looks like he's gonna die. He has to fight like a a different evil person of himself. Will somebody explain to me why his fear is troll him? Because it doesn't make any sense. Because he didn't know he was going to get turned into a troll. I mean, it was cool foreshadowing, but it just doesn't work. There are some plot inconsistencies in this episode. If you want to call them that, there's a couple of them in this episode. In episode 32, we... No. No. Spot. In spot 32, we have the Shattered King. Episode 18 of season 1. Boom, boom, shake the room. If you don't know what that means, then, yeah. Uh, Jim gives thigh blades. Yes, guy. Hit him up. Start being even more of a bad. But, uh, yes, please. Kick Angor's butt, my dude. Um, 31, we have Waka Chaka, episode 5 of season 1. I think it's funny because Toby's like, Jim, Jim, her face. And Toby's like, well, just because it, he, she's not your type doesn't mean you have to be rude about it, Tobes. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and 30 spot, we have Recipe for Disaster, episode 11 of season 1. Claire is like a little suspicious of Jim and what's going on with Jim. Uh, Strickler, Barbara, and Jim all have a dinner. This is the episode where Strickler steals uh, Jim's amulet and then replaces it with a fake. And then Blinky, Arg, Toby and Nada Enrique all have like their own little quest in this episode to like sneak into the changing's uh, office and they see blueprints or something that looks suspiciously like an amulet and stuff that looks suspiciously like a fake amulet. Yet Blinky doesn't put two and two together. Dude, Blinkus, I thought you were the smart one. Uh, the fight, the whole constantly changing between uh, the changeling, literally, and eating dinner with Strickler and Jim, that was fun to watch, entertaining, a little crazy, that took her so long to make a pie, a gross pie anyway. So, yes. I'm just trying to get through these quick because I haven't already been filming for 31 minutes. Now we're in the 20s, whoop, whoop, and now we're in the 20s, whoop, whoop, I gotta go get ready for bed in 10 minutes, whoop, whoop. So in 29th spot, we have Return of the Troll Hunter, which is episode 14 of season one. Jim, super, super good scene at the start of this episode where he flips over these fire-breathing animals, destroys a fire hydrant, which is going to be expensive to both the, the townspeople and the earth. Uh, and, oh yeah, he goes into the... The veil, the thing in between. The in between, he gets to meet Kanjagar and the previous troll hunters and he insults them. Yes, Jim, you tell them. You tell them, my guy, please. Okay, um, then these are gonna be a little bit controversial. Episode in, in spot 28, we have Mudslinger, episode 15 of season one. This one I know would probably be like on the lower list of a lot of people, and it probably would be for me too, but. Jim swings his knife in this episode, or his sword, and it just looks so great. Amazing. And the author introduces uh, the totems and the totem monsters and stuff like that. And that was pretty cool too. But Jim, he just like winds it up and he just flings it. And I love that. In 27th spot, we have Blinky's Day Out, episode 17 of season 1. Blinky gets turned to a human. He goes outside in the world. Shenanigans ensue. Uh, Jim gets 
Ahem. <coughs> I'm sorry to tell you this, Jim, but this fate is worse than that. No, it wasn't Blinky. It was not worse than that. I don't know if he says death. I think he says this is worse than death. No, Blinks. It wasn't worse than death. Worse than death. Um, but he gets like a, he gets a nice little face tattoo, uh, and he also has a really good swing with the totem, which is awesome, and you cannot convince me otherwise. In 26th place, we have Kindergar. Such a fun title to say. It's just episode four of season two, uh, Kandragar and Arg merge. And it's also building up for the fifth episode when it comes to what's going to happen in the Darklands. In tw uh, spot 25's place, we have The Exorcism of Clara Nunez. This is episode 5, season 3. It has a lot of stuff with Clara M, which I already told you I'm not the biggest fan of in Troll Hunters. Even though after watching Wizards and then re-watching Troll Hunters, I'm still not the biggest fan. But it has an awesome scene where Jim is just jumping across the furniture. He's like, Claire, if you're seeing this, I did not destroy your house. <laughs> I told you guys, I adore, I adore this good humor. It's so great, it's so simple, it's great, and I love it. In 23rd spot, we have the Battle of Two Bridges. This is episode 13 of season 1. It's a good episode. We defeat Bular. It's the end of the first part, because there's like four parts. Each part's 13 episodes, so therefore the end of the first part. Um, we get that... <laughs> I don't want to go down there. There's a chicken surprise or two down there. And then they go down there into the sewers. It's great. Uh, Bular dies. Jim, it's a total bad butt. Like, pulling off his armor and then putting it back on and then shoving his sword right in Bular's gut. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful to watch my baby grow into a soldier and just an awesome person in general. In 22nd spot, we have In the Hall of the Gum Gum King, episode 13 of season 2. This one is super action-packed. They are busy trying to get all these trolls out of the uh, troll market where Gun Gunmar has risen and returned and they're turning uh, trolls into his slaves and so they're trying to get as many of these people out of there as they can and then Claire Claire does something really cool and as much as I hate to admit it Claire did really she was really powerful in this scene and at the 21st spot we have beginnings part one yeah beginnings made it up this high uh this is the first episode of season one and I like this episode I think it's really good um it does a really good job of setting it up as long as you're not the person who decides to <sighs> hate on it and nitpick it and say it's the worst show ever because of some animation errors Anyway, it's a really good episode. Um, it introduces the amulet. Jim gets his suit up, and it kind of like it, it does really well of introducing the mystery of Strickler. You're a bad guy. You are. It does really well of introducing that, and you're kind of like, why are his eyes changing colors? That's unique. Is he a troll? He's something, guys. He's something. Um, and yeah. Uh, then after that, we have a 20th spot. We have Skull Crusher, which is episode 2 of season 2. I had no idea where to put this. It was in the Darklands, so I knew it had to be high on the list because I adore the Darklands. But I had no idea where to put it. Um, and then I think the reason it's not higher on this list is what happens with Steve. Steve and up until Creep Slayers, is just a really annoying character to look at. He's cocky and he's he's annoying. That's some as, as easy as it, simplistic. He is annoying. Steve's annoying. Um, and in this episode, I think he's really stupid. And I think uh, something that happens in this episode's also dumb because they're trying to get Steve to leave this site in the forest where Claire is currently working trying to get the, the entire pieces of the bridge there and uh, Steve's like oh I'll leave I'll leave if you bow down to me and call me your king and then Toby does that but then he still try he, he's like no 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 I bet you want to be the king of the world and the ocean it's like dude you should just let him left but Come back and kick Steve right around in the butt because he gets arrested for drinking too many juice boxes, if you know what I mean. 
if this feels like we're Russian, it's because we kind of are. <laughs> and uh, spot number 19, we're down in the final 19, we have Beginnings Part 2. I knew this was going to be before the part 1 because I love Jim's suit up scene in this one. There's the stuff with Claire and he, and he goes, Bruno noches, and she's like, you speak Spanish? And he's silent because he doesn't speak it very well. Um, there's that, and then there's the fight with Bular in the street, and I thought that was really good. And Toby has some really funny lines in this episode. Uh, Bular's like, and now I'm really cured, killed too in uh, nearly as many days, or something like that. And Toby goes, oh no, he's good at math! And then also, Toby says, you bring death with you. Uh, that's another one of my favorite lines of Toby's. So that happens. And um, then Jim's suit up scene. He's like, for the glory of Merlin, Dale is my new man. And then he just closes his eyes. And then Bular hits him in the chest and like rebounds off of it. You see it like three times. He floats into the air. He suits up. Everybody is watching in amazement. My jaw is dropped. And I'm just you're so great, my guy. And then he falls into the canal on his legs with his knees bent and the sword just comes out of his hand. Talk about powerful, am I right? Oh, he's just such a great person and I love him. And then he's like so ready to fight. He lifts the sword, a little struggles a little bit. And then he sees Blue Lord and he's like, nope. And he just takes off running. <laughs> I knew it was going to be before part one, before I even started making the list. And it's kind of why I wanted to make the list, just to put it before part one. So. Episode 18, we have Wherefore Art Thou Troll Hunter, which is episode three of season one. Uh, we get to meet at Troll Market, which is cool. Uh, Jim goes up against Draw for the first time and fails. And he gets a little bit of training from Blinks little bit. We're going to see Un Unka, the unfortunate. Uh, episode 17, we have Night Patrol, which is episode one of season three. <sighs> guys, guys, I think I might have just broke my bookshelf. Uh, anyway, guys, Strickler and Jim team up, and I, I love it. Not only because they're a cool duo, because it's like the lower part of why I love it, because Jim turns off his humanity. Yes! Oh, Jim turns off his humanity, and it is just him with no humanity is so good. He's such a good fighter when he has no humanity, and then he, like, raises this thing like this, and his humanity comes back on, and he just, like, deflates. Um, and that's why, that's, that's why it's not higher on the list, because he doesn't hurt Strickler more. Uh, but then he turns it off. He turns his humanity off and has to fight Draw at the end of the episode. And um, then Blinky like, has to help him. And Blinky, Blinky says, I would follow you to the ends of the earth. <laughs> Blinky and Jim. <sighs> they have such a great father and son relationship. And if Blinky dies from Rise of the Titans, Okay, another controversial one. This is the other filler. So, uh, spot 16, we have Hero with a Thousand Faces. This is episode 7 of season 2, and yeah. It's a filler. And it also brings... Why didn't they give Jim more of those little amulet pieces to try out? He tried out, like, two of them in that episode, and they're never heard from again. I think mean, those could have come in real handy with the fight against Gunmar, Angor, and Morgana. When you look at it like that. Anyway, this one's filler. It's really stupid. Jim has like seven other people of himself come out. His like other personality sides. Uh, there's a whole part of it in the Art of the Troll Hunters book that I have read and loved. Um, there's a whole page on it and it's great. But yeah, it's filler. It's really dumb. And uh, there's the green Jim and he's like, mm, glory! And he just like... Yeah. Oh, and Jim and Clara are now dating, for any of y'all's information, if you were curious. They are now a couple, officially. They might have been a couple for a while, but now they officially a couple. I don't know what's going on with the accent, guys. I can't explain to you. In 15, we have Clara and Ple Present 
Danger. This is episode 12 of season 1. Uh, this is the episode I, like, binged the first 11 to get to when I first started watching this show because I wanted to see Claire's reaction to Jim being the troll hunter. I really wanted to see it. And Jim being strong enough to steal the amulet back after it was stolen from him? I mean, I think that's what happened. And he just calls for it, and it flies across the town of Arcadia to him. <sighs> My dude is so powerful. And uh, yeah, and then he gets his really cool armor scene, and then he goes up against Nomura, or Numora, I say Nomura. She goes up against Nomura, and it is so good. He throws his sword again. I don't know what it is, but I like it. Can you tell I like when he throws his sword at the opponent? Because I think I've mentioned it every time it's happened in an episode. In 14th spot, we have the episode Jim Hunters, which is episode 11 of 3. Whoa. I messed up on that one. It's getting late, guys, okay? I apologize. But Jim Hunters is in 14. I like this episode because... It comes right after episode 10, and Jim is now a troll, and he and Arg, okay, Arg is so cute in this one, he's like, Jim, troll? And he just starts running back and forth. That's so cute. Jim, he's a cute little boy. Uh, Argus. And so is Jim. Uh, <coughs> anyway, uh, yeah, but Jim is now a troll, and he's great as a troll, and he's kind of like, not super like sad and then it just hits him all of a, se a sudden when he eats a blender it hits him all of a sudden that you know i'm a half troll and he gets really upset and he runs off and then claire says i love you but i kind of i i hate the dinner scene in this episode i cringe when i watch it because i just i know like he just starts eating the fork i'm like no it's happening it's happening uh, I always look away. I look away when he, he starts to eat the fork. I look away, y'all, and I am not kidding. When he eats the fork, I just can't stand it. <sighs> Alright, spot 13, we have Win, Lose, or Draw, which is the sixth episode of season one. I like this episode a lot. I think I've always liked it uh, because I like Jim. He decides not to kill Draw, and I really like that part about it. Um... And then Drawl comes back and he helps Jim in this one. He helps Jim uh, defeat Nomura who would, comes and attacks him in his house. And I like this episode. I don't know why. I just do. I like when the heroes aren't good at fighting yet and they overcome a big challenge. And he overcame a big challenge of fighting Drawl. And then he didn't kill Drawl. And Drawl and him became friends. And then Drawl died. And I think we're supposed to be sad but I didn't cry. Okay. In spot number 12, we have the episode Bad Coffee, episode 3 of season 3. This is the episode where Anton spoke his last word. I mean, they actually reused the, uh, the Don't Think Become scene and at the end of the season. They reused that, but this is the last episode that Anton filmed and he didn't get to finish it all the way. Um, and he actually, his voice actor changes during the, the, the coffee, coffee. Um, and yes, I need to mention that because it's very sad. Um, and yes, but what Anton does get to voice is really, really good. He voices Jim, uh, with the, what is it called? Dude. I can't remember, but it is this thing that affects uh, changelings, and it brings out their troll side, the changeling, it does for the changeling. And so Jim, the human, takes it, and he becomes a killer! Dude, he his armor, whoop, right on, and he gets his sword out. It's just chef's kiss. Amazing. And then when he fights Nomura and Strickler, and he like kicks Nomura, and then he like runs at her and like pins her against the wall with his beautiful shield. I love it, guys. I love Jim with no humanity. It's so awesome. 
Uh, so yeah, I need to go to the Changeling Eyes, which I'm pretty sure sprouted a whole genre of troll hunters fan fiction because y'all really like to have troll be half changeling or whole changeling y'all love that um and even though i adore jim with no humanity i'm not the biggest fan of changeling jim it is not and spot number 11 we have bittersweet 16 which is episode 9 of season 1 this one I don't think a lot of people love, and I understand. You might not like this episode. Uh, it's his 16th birthday, Jim 16. He's 17 in Rise of the Titans, I'm pretty sure. Some of y'all commented that on my reaction to the trailer, and you told me he was 17. <laughs> yes! Uh, anyway, I think it'll be one more year that it's appropriate for me to simp for him, because I'm 16 right now. I'll be 17 this year, so like, I'm a, it's appropriate, you know? Um, it's not weird. Uh, so, yeah, and... My favorite part of this episode, and why it's so high on the episode, is because Jim sacrifices his life. I mean, I'm pretty sure he sacrifices it because, you know, I don't think somebody would believe they'd be able to make it alive after having thousands, millions, billions, trillions jolts of lightning coursing through their body. Because he gets picked up by a stockling, and he has to go, and he puts a sword to the lightning, and... Wow, what a great description. But I like... I love that. And then he falls to the sky, lightning flashes, it's beautiful. So, in spot number 10, we have Wingmen, which is the 23rd episode of season 1. I like this episode because it has Drawl and Jim bonding. Hmm. I rated the episode where Drawl dies low, but now I'm rating the episodes where Jim and Drawl bond high. Except for episode 7, I did not rate that one high, even though they bonded in that one. Anyway, that's weird. Uh, but I like this episode. It is when the Krubera come and uh, they have to now go up against the Krubera trolls to make sure that Arg doesn't have to be forced back to the underneath the mountain. Uh, and I like this episode. I enjoyed the game. I think it's really good. And then when Jim gets his armor, I think that's really good too. It's just such a cool scene to watch him fly in the air, grab his armor, and then just... It encompasses him, and I think that's a really good scene. I love Jim's armor scenes. I just, I love them, because I love Jim. Episode 9. <sighs> okay, okay. This one, this one's a controversial, and I understand that. I do. I understand that very, very well. I promise you all. In episode 9, or spot 9, we have episode 22 of season 1, It's About Time. <laughs> I like this one a lot. Um, and I have very good reason to it. I actually know why I like this one so much. And it's because Jim gets overwhelmed. Uh, everyone is just asking him all these questions about um, homecoming prince? whatever it's called, Steve's asking him about that, Toby's asking him about the the stone, and Claire's asking him, like, well, you're not going to give Angorot his ring back, are you? Because he's an assassin. You can't trust him, or whatever. And, I mean, Strickler told him himself and two, two seasons later. There's no honor among assassins. Uh, and he just gets overwhelmed, and he presses the thing, and I just, I love that he got overwhelmed, because he had the thing with Bagu uh, Baguela again, and Claire almost got run over by a truck, and yeah, I, I like that he got overwhelmed, and it just really shows that it wasn't super easy for him to adjust, and it wasn't, and he gave up his humanity, he gave up his life to, uh, help save the world, and yeah, it's just... I like this episode because of that. I do. Uh, that's most. That's why it's up so high on the list, is because he gets so overwhelmed. In spot number eight, we have Eternal Light Part 1. This is the 12th episode of Season 3. Um, I didn't know where to put this because I do like it better than It's About Time, but not as much as some of the other episodes down or further on this list. It was confusing times. Uh, and I like this episode because there's a really good gym scene. <laughs> There is, and I know I'm not the only one who loves it because some of y'all in other co uh, other trailer videos say that this is like your guys' favorite scene, and it's so good. It's where he just starts hopping on trolls. He like 
whatever this is right into one and he slashes him and he throws a sword down and he has those thigh blades and he just swings off of one. <sighs> it's not only such a great scene gym wise, but it's so well animated. The animation for the show is fantastic and uh, it's just so great. Um, but the animation of the content, guys, Jim Hale moves. Anyway, so yeah, it's so well animated and it's great. But, I mean, we don't really get any of the big important fight stuff until a, a part two of this two-part finale, series finale. So, yeah, he maybe deserves to be lower on the list. I had trouble with this one. I think this is the one I had the most trouble with. I just didn't know how to feel about it because I love this season finale, the series finale. I love the finale of this show. Um, but I had a hard time placing it on the list. In spot number seven, we have Something Rotten This Way Comes. This is episode 26 of season one, and this nearly made spot six. I had to compare this to the season finale, a series finale finale of season three, because this one is right below part two of Eternal Night, um, and I had to compare these two. This one is where Angor is killed for the first time, and I think the scene where Toby and Claire and uh, Jim all band together to kill Angorot, Toby's like, up here, rothead, and then he just, boom, and then it's Toby, and Jim does that really good scene where he like kicks back on one hand and he kicks with his foot uh, the, the knife, the Siberius knife. Oh my god, I swear, I like Troll Hunters, I just can't think of anything right now. And as soon as I get ready for bed and go to sleep, I'm going to crawl into bed tonight and it's all going to come rushing back to me. But he kicks uh, the sword, the knife, the dagger, the, it's a dagger, into uh, Angorot's chest and he turns into a rock. I think it's really well done. But the reason I love this episode so much is because Jim gets his red armor. He looks awesome in red, by the way. And he goes into the Dark Lands. Um, and I had to compare that ending with the actual ending of the show. And ultimately, it did come in below uh, Eternal Night Part 2 because Eternal Night just has a lot more going for it. I love, I love Jim's fight with Gunmar and Ingor. I think it's so well done. Like, the animation's really good. Like, his whole, like, he holds a sword up here and his, like, he, like, flashes and he expands and booms and bam, bam, bam. He defeats Gunmar and he kicks him off the building and he says for Drawl, which is very powerful and very moving. Even though I didn't cry at Drawl's death, that's still a very, very powerful scene. My nose is getting stuffed up and my voice is getting raspy, if you can't tell, right at the beginning of the video. Um... So, yeah, that's really well movie, and that's why Eternal Night is in part six. And I'm not going to go in and explain why Eternal Night is part six, or in sixth spot again, because I just kind of did with part seven. But, yeah, um, there we go. All right, episode five, we have Angor Management, which is 24th episode of season one. I like this episode because Jim fights Angor, and Jim does a really good job fighting Angor. They had a plan. Him and Strickler team up, and they have a really good plan. Y'all, this just shows that Jim and Strickler are a great team. Anyway, so they team up, and they have a really good plan. Barbara comes and messes it all up. Barbara nearly now, she gets slashed. Well, Strickler gets slashed, but then she gets slashed. Uh, and Jim has a great fight with Angor on the back of the car. He's just hanging off the edge, fighting... Angor. Really good. I love it. And the way that episode ends is so, like, cliffhanger -y. And it's just like, anyone, please. And it's, 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 they're, it's good. These episodes end great. They're great endings for episodes. But that was five. That means we hit the top five. We have four more left, everybody. Uh, so, in spot number four, we have... Escape from the Darklands. This is the first episode of season two, and I like this episode because we're in the Darklands. We are in the Darklands, and I love the Darklands. I do. I don't give it a secret. I love the Darklands so much. I want. I wish we had more of Jim in the Darklands, and uh, this is where he's not like lost. He still has his will and his his mind is still straight and. You know, he gets Enrique, and he gives Enrique to Claire, but then he gets stuck in the Darklands, and yeah, I love it. I love it. 
uh, I can't I can't articulate my thoughts anymore. Why can't I think of big words like articulate if I can't think of what in the world the order is called for the changeling? I can't think of it. It's an I, isn't it? Is it an I? Please say it's an I. Okay, and in the spot number three, we have Unbecoming, which is episode 11 of season two. It's so good, guys. It's so good. This episode shows what would have happened if Jim had not taken the amulet. And Anton does an amazing job of voicing it because it gets so emotional at the end. And even though he doesn't have the amulet, he goes out to fight Gunmar. And Merlin's like, if you, if you go out and fight Gunmar, you will die. And he's like, yeah, well, I'm a troll hunter. <gasps> this is what we do. And he just walks out. And it's so good. I get quiet when I talk about good scenes. Uh, and it's just so well done. And Jim crying over the amulet, you can hear his emotion in that. And it's so, it's so good. And yeah, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> don't cry, guys, and don't cry. Why are you crying? You didn't cry when you watched the episode for the first time. All right, in second place, we have episode five of season two, Homecoming. The reason this is so high up on the list is not only because it's the entirety of it is in the Darklands, also because, I mean, Gunmar comes back into the human world, so that's fine, cool. But, but, Jim nearly gets killed. His will completely weakens uh, when he's fighting Nomura, and... I love it. <laughs> I love that he gets, nearly gets his head chopped off. Uh, or I think he would probably become a slave because I think that's what Gunmar wanted more was a slave. And then at the edge of the, that cliff right there, uh, Gunmar is trying to take him like hostage, slave, trying to make him his slave. And Jim holds out even though he's like he's not doing very good. And I don't, guys. <laughs> I love the Dark Lamp and I love that. So, yeah. My favorite episode out of them all. Yeah. I don't think many of you will agree with me on this one. But before we get into it, tell me in the comment section down below what your least favorite episode is and what your favorite episode is. Because I am very curious to know. And if you watch this all the way through, I greatly appreciate you guys. Um, but my favorite episode of them all is episode 10 of season three, A House Divided. Guys, I'm crying just thinking about it because this episode is so great. Um, I mean, the reason it's in top space isn't because of what happens with Strickler and Barbara or of what happens with Arg and the Kubera trolls. Both of those are really good and they add to the story and it like flips it all around, right? Uh, but, and it, like, really gets the fu the last three episodes of that show going, you know? Um, but Jim and Merlin in this scene, in this episode, is why I love it so much. Um, first of all, we get some awesome Jim scenes, uh, and that is where he's, uh, got his amulet, he puts it on, he goes, step away from the door, old man. <laughs> yes! Yes! Yes, I love it. And Merlin's like, who are you calling it all? But whatever. We don't care about Merlin. We care about Jim. And then Merlin and Jim fight. And uh, Jim don't do so good. I, yeah, he don't. He don't do that good. But we get manipulative piece of crap Merlin in this episode. And the ending scene comes on. And the ending scene is just wow. It is so good. And... I adore the ending scene, and I can't formulate how much I love the ending scene so much. I cry when I see it, because I think it's it's just so well done. The music, the animation, the whole view, you're getting the vibe. The fact that Jim sits on the toilet, his phone is on the sink, it's ringing like crazy, because they can't get to him. And 
he puts his armor on. He stares at himself in the mirror. He's got that determined face. He has, he makes, it's such a struggle for him to make this decision because he, in his mind, believes that he has to do it because this is what Merlin manipulated him into believing, that he had to become this half troll. And so he believes he has to do it to save the world. And he puts his armor on and he thuds on the floor and everyone else rushes up to the bathroom. And he goes to the, the full bathtub shower and it's got the stuff poured into it. And he looks back at the door and they're banging on the door. And he doesn't open it up for them. He just gets in the bathtub and he gets ready to go under and he goes under it. And there's flashbacks of the entire show. Just first they're longer and then it's just boom, 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 boom. And the music swells and it's just... It's so good. And he goes under and the music goes silent. And he just hear the thud of the heartbeat. The door opens and Strickler grabs the glass container and he looks at Barbara with a look of like, I oh. don't And just, that's the end of the episode. And wow. Guys, it is so good. And it's so amazing. And I love it. I love it so much. Um, and I mean, then Jim Hunters picks up with the heartbeat thud, the same sound effect, which is also really good. But uh, I love it. I love this episode so much. And that's why it's in my, it's my first place because of that scene, the emotion, the everything you feel in it. It's just so well done and it's so good. And I love it. I love it a lot. So there we go. That's my entire list, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't want to edit it. Oh my god, I have a 30 minute video I need to edit already. And I have this one, which I don't even know how long I have footage for. But yeah, I hope you guys liked it. If you want me to do one on Three Below and Wizards, tell me in the comment section. Don't you worry, they won't be nearly as long because they don't have nearly as many episodes. Actually, uh, Thibodeau has exactly half, and Wizards doesn't even have a whole 13, so it's got 11. So yeah, I would love to do this if you guys would like to see one of those. Tell me in the comment section. Uh, yeah, I love you all. Subscribe, like, comment, do all those fun things. I'm, I'm sorry this video was a mess. The further we got along into it, the more tired I am, the more stuffed up I am, and just... <sighs> tired. I'm done. <laughs> I am with this. So yeah, I hope you guys liked it. I'm sorry if it was a mess. But I love you all so much. I hope you guys all next time for another video. And hey, don't forget I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye everyone.